Now we move on to the last part which is on forecasting uh, work hours and analysis of trends. Okay, So again coming in the productivity measurement system when we look at work hour forecast we can look at it from a single activity perspective or a group of activities or a package perspective. So when we take a single activity the key is how you calculate percentage complete. Okay, and for a single activity, it's fairly straightforward. A percentage complete is quantity to date divided by estimated quantity. And we do a work hour forecast by taking work hours to date divided by percentage complete gives you the forecast of work hours. Okay, when I say work hour, it could be man hour, man day, crew hour, crew day, but we're using the term work hour generically here. Now, if it's a group of activities, it's not you cannot calculate percentage complete by just adding up quantities because the units are different. Okay, so as unit for work for each activity is different, the quantity cannot be used. Okay, the common unit actually for all activities is work hour or money, cost money. Okay, so we come into this concept of here we are saying earned work hours, it could be earned money earned you know, you know cost or uh, what do you say uh, yeah it could be in you know in that form so here we're going to multiply by uh, by the work hours but it could be cost into uh, could be the same factor and we are calculating percentage complete here by as saying earned work hours by total estimated work hours so where here it's quantity by estimated quantity here we, we convert all of this into equivalent work hours and this remains the same okay so when we look at earned work hours basically it is quantity complete for each activity into estimated productivity of the activity okay we'll get into an example okay we take reinforcement we are only taking tying of reinforcement for example okay so this is the quant total estimated quantity this is the quantity to date okay so a quantity to date divided by estimate it's only about two percent complete and we are saying work hour forecast is 53 divided by the 2 percent which gives us the uh, the projected quantity and this is definitely simplistic it's linear we can complicate and we have taken a very simple example just to illustrate okay this can this this needs i mean the, the formula or the approach remains the same the values will get this is on based on one day's data the values will get more uh, what do you say realistic as you get more and more data in. Okay, but also it's a linear or a simplistic model itself. The model can be more complicated if the data justifies it, the factors are identified. We'll talk a bit about this after the next slide. Now, we go into a group of activities. So instead of having just tying, let's assume that I'm trying to measure percentage complete of reinforcement as a group of activities, not a single activity. Okay. So while the units are still kilogram, 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 I cannot add up the quantity of, of uh, so much of cut, so much of bend, so much of shift, so much of tie and say that this is divided by this total value that it would not give me a right view of the percentage complete. Okay. So what we need, what we do here is we take the quantity completed to date. Okay, the quantity completed to date. Uh, so so let, let me go through this table in detail. So you have estimated productivity kg per man day of each activity here. Okay, this is for cutting, bending, shifting and tying. The estimated quantity for all are remaining the same because the total quantity has to go through all this. The estimated man days is based on the, total the, the yeah, based on the productivity and the quantity. And this is the quantity completed to date. This is what is installed and I'm taking my measurement. Okay, my man days to date. So this is the amount of time man days I actually spent to do this quantity. Okay, this is here. Now, the completed, uh, so, so now we, we take the concept of earned man days. Okay, earned man days is basically the completed quantity okay and the expected productivity okay so that's d divided by a that's so this is the man days i should have spent for this quantity 
this is the mandates I should have spent for this quantity. That is the mandates I earned to install this quantity. This is the mandates I actually spent. Okay. So, what happens here is so when we look at the earned mandates as 167, the estimated mandates as this, my my when I look at it from, from the earned value concept, this is my total estimated mandates for act earned mandates for all activities divided by total estimated mandates. I get this value as 2.96 percent as my package completion or the group of activities. So, for my worker forecast, what I have to do is take my mandates to date, divide by my percentage complete and I get my projected mandates. Okay, let me stop here and ask you to clarify any doubts you might have. The typical doubt is what is an earned mandate? What is it? What does the earned mandate signify? Like what you should have actually Correct. used as per yeah. the plan. What you should have used so, <coughs> so used as per the plan. Okay. So I've spent 60 days. I've spent 50. Uh, I've actually spent 60 days when I should have spent 50. 50. Yeah. Yeah. Actually spent 75 when I should have spent 40. So this model that is there are several types of modeling for forecasting models we have again this is relatively simple compared to the types of models that can be used okay when you used when so here we are only using uh, the mandates which are which have been spent and the expected productivity but there can be things like weather there can be things like a lot of calendar factors which can be brought into forecasting models if these are available and you have a proper model that's calibrated that could be done but it has to justify the sophistication of the model. What we have here is a simple model. Okay, when we go to analysis of trends, okay, I think this matrix is familiar where we had production and productivity and uh, we want to now take the same example and see where is this going to, where, where, where does the project, if we take different weeks, here we have week 1, week 2, week 3, week 4. Okay, and we have actual production and actual productivity. Where does this lie with respect to this matrix? So, if you remember, we said this is our target value. Yes. So, here is 120, okay, by 25,000 is, is the ex planned production for a week. Yes. So, this is one representation. Now, compared to this, where does my first value lie? 110, the, the coordinates will be 110. Q2. Yeah, it will be in Q2. Okay. First one is in Q2. Second one? Second one will be in Q3. Q3. Third one? Q1. Third one is 120. Third one is 120. No, okay. Third one is yeah, 124, 3086. That's Q1. And the fourth one is Q3. in back in Q3. <coughs> Okay, so this is one way of looking at it. Does this give you the full picture? What what is missing? What would you what, how would you change this? Taking ideas we learned about performance factor, how would you modify that? Okay, so two two things happen. One is this gives you weekly. This each week is independent. Okay, so it shows you the where I am on the quadrant that week based on what we learnt a few minutes back. Cumulative. What would you, how would you, one is I would try to do cumulative. I could not just put all these independent dots, I would like to see it from a cumulative perspective. Second, rather than have a value, a real number value here, I would use a factor. Okay, so let us look at it from uh, running average perspective okay and here we have again uh, it's it's the same information so here production and productivity so it's always between q2 and q1 okay so, yeah and we are now putting the target as performance factor it's a 1 1 target which is a very i mean it's 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 a simple target to relate to and uh, 
when you look at it, all of them are in the Q2. Q2. Does this relate to what happened in the uh, in the? Uh, Quick no, no. When we looked at the performance factor graphs, production Quick was Quick production was always above, productivity, productivity was below. Yeah. Same thing it shows same in the same. Thing. Okay, so this is another way to view the same information. And again, there's a lot of choice of what do you make what called dashboards. It's up to the team to decide which dashboard they want to standardize on and be comfortable with.